as you all belong to the Calorex group, TPS. So eCal is a digital learning initiative of Calorex group. Uh, the name is eCal Academy, a digital teaching platform enabling live and interactive classes, offering individual and group programs. Now we cater to classes KG to 12, uh, preparing you students for your CB based on your CBSE curriculum learning and skill enhancement programs. So here yeah, it's a digital learning platform. Here you can find uh, lots and lots of uh, courses uh, and advancement programs related to your interest. You can definitely uh, research on ecal.com. This is the website and you can uh, search for different programs and courses we are running right now. Today here we are uh, uh, all together for uh, maximizing your English potential strategies for top scorers webinar. Uh, our host here is uh, Miss Neetu Bharadwaj. Ma'am, hello, am I audible now, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, you are. Yeah, so ma'am is an experienced uh, facilitator with 21 years of service in secondary section. So she will be the host for all of you today. So yes, we can continue, ma'am. Over to you. Thank you, Sona, ma'am. And a very good morning to everyone. I can understand the way you're putting effort to join this webinar on a Sunday. So it's a very good morning to you all. And uh, I can see all my all my faces, all the faces which are actually recognizable to me. Uh, we are going to just about to start the session here. Just let me share the screen with you all. Just give me a second. Uh, the screen is visible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it's ma visible. Okay, yes, there we go. Thank you, Vita. Welcome and let us talk, discuss and enjoy the session, okay? Basically, when we talk about English, English, we need to understand that you need to start working on improving it from day one. Today's session will introduce, recapitulate and, uh, you know, various tools and strategy to improve your English scores. So, good morning, everyone. And uh, good morning for the yet new session of ECAL Academy. Maximizing your English potential strategies for top scores. So today's takeaways, the takeaway from this webinar. Lots of tips regarding grammar and writing skills. Then we are going to go to the literature. Comprehensive tips to upload, uplift scores that will be in general. So I hope this is, this webinar is going to help. Okay, talking. Am I audible, children? Am I yes, audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. I think it was a low network and I just got disconnected. You, we... Let's go.
go for the let's go for this one. maximizing your english potential strategies for top scores okay so today's today's uh, session is going to bring what today's session might bring out the key takeaways are how to improve your reading and writing skills how to master vocabulary and grammar and how effectively can you lift english how about your exams how do you feel when you have exams we can have some responses in the chat box do you feel nervous do you have a smoke yeah shriyansh is nervous and i trust is is and shida says nervous yes nervous about writing skill okay karvi is nervous about writing skills easy some children are giving mixed responses that it is easy so you will busy do you feel burdened with the books as if such a lot of knowledge is there which needs to be you know there in your brain okay what is going to come arnav sir what is going to come and you are anxious about it fine so you might feel nervous you might feel dizzy you might have butterflies in your stomach you might feel alert as well okay what happens or what comes in your mind when you have these situations is it chaos can't think straight negative thoughts and predictions or racing thoughts many of them right the first and the foremost thing we are going to do is the one and the only the mantra is smart goal setting i remember we have done this exercise in the school as well so you should be aware about it but let me explain this in a very simple language smart s m a r t it stands for specific measurable attainable relevant and time bound now let me give you an example how are we going to talk about it let me give you an example as in what kind of a goal should be specific what do you mean by specific so you can have these goals one at a time you don't have to think about so many goals to example let me say i want to improve my score in english okay so i'll i'm specific specific means particular you target at one you don't have many together you have one at a time so now i want to improve my english goals so i'm specific about it measurable is it measurable can it be measured can it be measured can the if i'm setting my goal as improving of english score my english marks is it measurable yes it is measurable how how in the first my score say 60% in my second exam i score say 67% i was a little better okay but make my goal and i need to improve them by the annual exam my target is annual exam so i have at least 8 to 9 months and i need to improve my score say i will say 75% or 80% sustainable what do you mean by attainable achievable can you achieve it can i achieve it if i say i have 9 months and i want to i have 60% of marks right now 67% of marks but i want to work hard and come up to 80 can i attain it do you think can i attain it anyone anyone yeah you can nod your head you can give a thumbs up you can react so i will come to you immediately so do you think do you think yes of course i can attain it i can achieve it how can i achieve it i can achieve it by working hard on it now what is relevant relevant means it should be real what do you mean by real for example i am scoring 60% marks okay and now i am in a you know full energy and i say in the annual examination i am going to score no 90% now can i jump from 60? no it has to be real 
For example, it can be slow from 60 to 70 or 75, from 75 to 80 or 85, from 85 to 90 or 95. It should be real. So it should be relevant to the time which you're going to give. Nobody can work wonders in one day, one week, one month. So how will you focus it on? Two months, three months, nine months, eight months. You need to give yourself time. So that is what a SMART goals all about. SMART, S for specific, means it should be particular. M for measurable, which can be measured. A for attainable, which can be achieved. R for relevant, which are real. And T for time bound, you should have time. You should give yourself time in order to achieve those goals. So they can be small, small goals at a point. And small, small goals are going to achieve big ones. Is it clear? You can give me a thumbs up. Is it clear? Yes. Shriyansh has a doubt. Shriyansh, you want to say something? Yes, Bhutan. Shriyansh, you want to say something? Oh, ma'am, actually your voice is cutting a lot and we are not able to hear it clearly. Okay. 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 Let's go on to the next slide. Am I audible, Shriyansh, now? No. Is it clear now, Bita? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So here we go. So when we talk about English, we all know what we need to practice. We need to practice our writing skills, our reading skills, listening skills, and speaking skills. You need to focus on these four skills when you're talking about English language. And it is easy. You should have fun. You should have fun while listening. You should have fun while speaking. You should have fun while reading and writing. Once you enjoy, then the scores will automatically follow. Okay. Now, always there are two things which you need to remember. Okay. One, English is a mandatory CBSC subject. Okay. And this is going to improve your scores. You cannot be casual about it. You have to be very because this is to other. If you're good in English, your SST is better. If you're good in English, your science is better. If you're good in English, your other subjects, IT is also better. So it is correlated. Okay. And see, we have observed so many things. The children who work hard with English, they actually get good scores. And the children who are actually intelligent and don't work hard with English, the score goes low. So you can do anything and you can do better. Now tell me, you can tell me what comes in the paper. How is your paper divided? Everybody knows how the paper is divided, but I would like to hear it from you. What do you think? How is your paper divided? How many sections and what? Aradhya, yes, dear. Ma'am, it is divided in comprehension, uh, literature, Aradhyan, grammar, yes, and, uh, writing skills and all. Yes. Kavya, you have, you have the same answer, Kavya? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Anybody would like to say anything else? Any other kind of paper? Any, any other kind of division in the paper? Yes. So we have, every English paper is going to have Reading comprehension. Whatever the school is, everybody is going to have reading comprehension. They will have writing skills and grammar and they will have literature. So we need to take care of these three parts of your paper. We are going to discuss that. Okay. But before we discuss, we are going to have one activity. All right. Now this activity is known as think aloud comprehension. We are going to read this comprehension. We are going to solve this comprehension. Then I will send you to come back. Okay. Here we go. The title of the comprehension is the three fish. We can take turns. Am I audible? We can take turns. Yes, ma'am. Who will read it? Uh, no, ma'am. 
anybody can raise a hand who starts reading reading anyone okay so we have hands up with aradhya kavya nirupam also has raised the hands who can falak start falak beta start reading one, the three fish once upon a time there lived three fish in a pond they were close friends and were living together for years in the same pond one day by very good falak Johnny... one passage at a time falak okay let's have divyanshu Yes, ma'am. One day, while on his journey, a passing fisherman saw that the pond was filled with fish. You can go for the next one because this is just one line. Yes, ma'am. He was surprised and delighted, and immediately informed his fellows about it. Together, they decided to come the next morning and catch those fish. Okay, so we can have Kairavi. Kairavi, you're the next beta. Yes, ma'am. Yes, beta. One of the, the three last fish. Finger. One of the three fish who was also the wisest heard the conversation between the fisherman and his fellows. Okay. Now let us have the first question. Okay. okay. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen now? Let's have Akshat. Akshat, what do you think is going to happen now? The fish will inform the other friends uh, what the uh, wise men said, and they will uh, decide a plan and uh, how to okay. save their lives. Okay. Sparsh, what do you think? Okay. Very good, Akshat. Very nice. Yes, Sparsh. What do you think? Ma'am, I agree with him. Will the fish? Be... You agree with him? Uh, anybody else? Anyone else? Who want to answer? You can unmute and say if you want to answer something. The first question. Ma'am, Ma may I answer? Seema. Yes, Seema. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, the fish will inform everyone, and then, uh, and as the other fish will, uh, and as the first fish will say that it's okay, let's go with him. But the third fish will not go, as uh, it thinks that this is our found, this is our grand, uh, great grand uh, parents' uh, pond, so we would not uh, leave this pond. Okay, thank you, Seema. Thank you so much. We can have some and Sanvi. We can have Sanvi. Sanvi, will you think? Uh, will what do you think? Will the fish be able to save themselves? What do you think, Sanvi? Yes, yes Sanvi. Ma'am, ma the fish will able to save. They will be able to save uh, themselves. Okay. Fish. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Now I want raised hand so that I can see somebody reading it again. We'll continue the reading. Ma'am, can I raise your hands? So we can, yeah. Let me see. Uh, Jay, Jay, we can have you, Vita, and then we can have yes. Dakshita. Yes. After Jay, we can have Dakshita. Yes, Jay. It it devised a strategy immediately rushed to the other to ex explain this entire situation and proposed and. Proposed a plan to leave the pond immediately and move to another place. So when we are reading the passage, okay, now device. Who will actually try to guess or know the meaning of device? And what do you mean by strategy? There are two words. One is device and one is strategy. Who will tell me device first? Ma'am, can I? Sir, help us. Sir, you can help us. We can. We can take the Just raise your hand, beta. Sir. We can have you. What do you mean by device? Device a strategy. So what do you mean by that? Okay. We can have Dakshita. Yes, Dakshita. You have raised your hand. Try to match the word to the sentence. Yes, Dakshita. Yes, Bita. Ma'am, strategy means the strength or the speed. 
the plan. Um, can I? The plan. So, yes, who is this? Yes, answer please. Uh, the strategy means the plot and to devise means to cunningly uh, make a, to plot something. Cunningly, that is what is meant by device and strategy means the plan. Ma'am, can I? Yes, we can. Yes, are you there? So we can have any idea again. Anyone else? Shlesha, we can have Shlesha. Yes, Shlesha. Yes, Vita, try. Go to here. My voice is stuck in between. Mama, I cannot hear you. Okay. Am I am I audible now? Am I audible now? Mama, Ma little bit. You are stuck in between. Ma'am, Ma your audio is logging a lot. Yes, ma'am, in between okay. you are not audible. In now am I audible? No, ma'am, no, you ma are still I, talking in between. Between, okay, still okay, not okay, but not. Device. Yes, device. So we'll have device means to plan. And okay. Device is to construct a plan, to make. Device is to make and strategy. Raise your hands. Ma'am, ma can I read? Okay, because when you say can I, I'm not able to see you. So we can have Kashvi. Can, can we have Kashvi? Kashvi? Yes, ma'am. Kashvi, can we have Kashvi? Yes, ma'am. Yes, brother, read. Yes. The second fish agreed and decided to move out from the pond quickly. Ma'am, now can I read the third one? Yes, Vita. Read the third one. The, th the third fish, however, mocked them. He felt that the pond was their home and they must not leave their home. Yeah. Anybody can tell me what is mock? Ma'am? Ma'am? Ma'am, I think mock to means make fun? Uh, to make didn't fun. agree. Said to make fun. Ma oh, make fun of. Did not agree? Make fun of. That why are you leaving? Okay. The first answer, what you would have done in its place, please. Ma'am, can I say? Yes, Aradhya. Ma'am, I would probably, uh, uh, I would probably leave that pawn to save my life. Okay. Do you have a plan to save their life? Anybody having any alternative plan? plan? Whatever the plan they have made, other than that, can we have another plan or something? Ma'am? Yes? Ma'am, the fish can add that uh, she or he is dead. Okay. <laughs> That's very good. Very smart. Any other plan? We agree with that. Okay. They can act as uh, if they're dead. And like, nobody's going to uh, catch the dead fish. Very good. Ma'am, can I? Yes, Vita. 
Ma'am, suppose they all the other fishes not uh, are not leaving the pond. So when they will catch the catch with the net, the uh, the fish which uh, uh, which uh, which was uh, telling the other fish, they can cut the uh, the fish can cut the net, and all the uh, other fish would be safe. But the net would would be the made of strong rope. They uh, oh, the okay. fish can oh, strong try. material. Yes, we have those counteracts. Fine, they can try. They can try, right? Ma'am, now who's going? To, somebody needs to read this part. Nirupama can read this. Nirupama, read this part, beta. Since the other two fish were unable to convince the third fish, they left the pond and decided to let him follow his own course of action. Okay. Now let's have the next one. Sanvi, will you read the next one? Can I read? Okay, ma'am. Okay, the next day, the fisherman and his Okay, one second. Sanvi, I think you got, a, you got a chance, na, Sanvi? So let's have Medanj. Medanj, you read, Bita. Okay, ma'am. Medanj, you can read, Bita. Okay. Yes, ma'am. The next day, the fishman and his fellows cast their nets and caught plenty of fish. They also managed to catch the third fish, who had refused to leave the pond due to its foolishness. While the other two fish, who had left earlier and displayed cleverness, were rescued and rewarded. Okay, now who will tell me the moral of the story? Quick. What is the moral? What do you think is the moral of the story here? Many have not raised hand. Why? You can raise your hands and tell. I can share. What do you think? Kavya, what do you think is the moral of the story, beta? Mom, I think that at times, uh, trying to teach other people that they are wrong or trying to teach them that uh, they should not kill, kill people and think for others, it's better to leave that place. Okay, that's really great. That's really great. Sparsh, what do you think? Do you have a moral better? Uh, Ma'am, it might be that you have to, um, you have to act uh, wisely and uh, always be one step ahead than the person who's trying to invade you. Okay, so here we go with the moral. So we also have a small moral over here for you to read out. You need to act wisely. Add your friendship. Your teamwork is important. Importance of time, teamwork, and cooperation. Okay, now these are the three questions. You can quickly take a screenshot of this or you can, you know, uh, we can read this and you need to answer these questions in a group. I'm going to separate you into teams and I'm going to put you into Zoom break rooms. Okay. Discuss it quickly. What are the answers to these three questions? And then you can come back. All right. All right. You can take a screenshot of this. We can read the questions. The questions are, what do the three fish represent in the story? They, how do they represent the story? Okay. Second one. How did the story and end, story's ending illustrate? Illustrate means show. How did the story's ending illustrate the importance of friendship? The last question is, how does the story of the three fish relate to real life situation? How can you relate it to real life situation? So it's very, very important. Okay. I'm going to pause and I'm going to stop sharing the screen and I will divide you into break rooms. Okay. Here we go. Join your break rooms quickly. Uh, Mom, something happened and I... 
left my break room. Can you uh, do it again? Ma'am? Ma'am, I'm not able to join my break room. Ma'am, you are on mute. Try it. Shresh can go to the room number six.
Mam, you're mute. Mam, you're mute. Okay. Are we back, everyone? Let us discuss it then quickly. Let us be back, everyone from the break rooms. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, not everyone has came back from the break rooms. I think. Yeah, everybody has to come back quickly. Ma'am, twenty-five of them are still there. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, there were about forty before in before the we went to the break rooms. Yeah. They will be coming back in two minutes. I'll just close the breakout rooms. Okay, here we go. So who is going to answer the first question now? First group can answer this. First group can answer this. What do the three fish represent? Raise your hands quickly. And uh, one group can have one participant, one leader. One group can have one leader. Okay, let's have Divyanshu first. Yes, Divyanshu. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, can I read the question? Ma'am. Yeah, yeah. What do the three fish represent in the story? The three fish represent in the story that we should cooperate with each other, no matter what, how much dangerous is the situation, but we should cooperate. Okay. Okay. Any other answer for the same question? Any other answer? Ma'am, I disagree with this answer. Yes, dear. Okay. Tell me. Ma'am, the first two fish were. Uh, what is the answer? Ma'am, the first two fish were representing uh, kindness and loyalty and teamwork, while the last fish was uh, representing um, uh, selfishness and foolishness because he was not agreeing with the others. Okay, very good, very good. Let's have the second question. Importance of friendship. What would you like to say on that? Anyone? You have to say your own names. Yes, dear. Anyone? Parsh. Raise your hands. May I? Yes, dear. Yes, Parsh. Uh, yes, Adhya. Adhya. Yes, Adhya. Yes, Adhya. Ma'am, we have to, like, in the story, the first two fishes trusted each other and guided each other throughout, and they went with a plan because they valued their own lives. So we can also say that they were... Very good. What about real-life situations? How do we connect this story with the real-life situation? Ma'am, may I? Ma'am, may I? Mom. Anyone? Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. One by one. Ma'am, Ma we should not get afraid when this kind of life troubling situation comes, and we should think wisely and patiently and plan out everything. Excellent. Excellent, Vita. Very good. Any other last answer? Anyone? May I? Yes, dear. Ma'am, uh, this uh, last question, the answer to this, that I think is like. Uh, we should always listen to everyone, uh, listen to everyone's point. We should not always listen to our own and listen to everyone's and make uh, teamwork is the best thing to in these kind of situations and you should not be scared in these kind of situations. Absolutely. Very good. So what do we, when we read the comprehension, what are the points to keep in mind? Okay. Number one, read the passage twice. Okay, you need to also understand the flow and structure of your passage, which is very, very important. And when you're reading the passage, see that you underline the main points and the main words. Okay, when you go, always read the questions. You know, this is a secret. 
let's first always read the questions and then read the passage. That is going to help you a lot to understand the passage. Okay. Read your passage two, three times nicely so that you're able to understand what is difficult part and what are the questions and what are the answers. You will be able to answer them easily. Okay. Always try to answer the questions. Don't copy the answer from the passage. Try to make your own answers. Okay. And you should always see that your grammar is always correct. You should check that grammar is correct when you are writing the comprehension answers. All right. So these are the main points which you need to keep in mind when you are solving any kind of a comprehension. We already solved the comprehension and you saw how we solved it. And different, different questions and how you were able to answer them. So comprehension needs a little bit of time. You need to take care that you read it once and twice. You need to read the questions first and then the passage and then need to write your answers in your own language. What happens when there are MCQs? Now, when there are MCQs, you might think, okay, A1, A is also lo looks like to be correct and B is also looking correct. Now, what to do? So always go for an appropriate answer, which is the most suitable answer. What do you understand by appropriate answer? Most suitable answer. So which is a suitable answer in the passage that you need to go ahead with. All right. So let's go for the second one. These are some kind of links which are going to help you with the comprehension. You can, I can send you these links later on, right? We are going to create a small story. Okay. After this. Then we are going to discuss first the writing section and the grammar section, and then we'll create a small story with us. Now, when we talk about writing section and grammar section, these are the components which you need to talk, take care of these. Okay. Now, what are these? Let's see. Number one, in the writing section, always remember your format. Okay. You have letter writing, you have notice writing, you have diary writing. So you need to remember your format. Because format is going to give you marks. If you don't remember the format, what will happen? Your marks will get deducted. Write an outline. Now, what do you understand by write an outline? When you're writing any kind of a piece of uh, English uh, writing skills, for example, you're writing a composition or you're writing an essay or you're writing a diary. With the help of a pencil, quickly jot down points. Okay, okay, I'm going to write this. I'm going to write this. I'm going to write this. And then when start writing your answers. Straight away, don't start writing answer. With the pencil, you can do a rough work. The way you do rough work in your mathematics, similarly, you can do some kind of a rough work in your, in your English paper also. So before you start writing an answer, the rough work can be done in the margin and you can jot down the points that I'm going to write this first, then I'm going to write this first and so on. Okay, that is the outline. We should make always an outline. Always check your grammar and spellings. Once you finish your paper, see that you check your grammar and spellings. Okay. Now, these are some common kind of mistakes which people make. The children make these mistakes. So, what are they? So, instead of writing ran, you should use more strong verbs. You can use the better word. For example, dash, bolted, sprinted. Instead of writing ran. Okay. I ran from, I bolted from there. I dashed from there. So that makes the writing impressive. All right. See that your sentences are short, long. Don't make same kind of sentences. Short, 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 short. All the sentences are short. No. Some are short, are long. Okay. Replace cliches. Now, what are cliches? Am I audible, children? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma Ma'am, you're clear now. Okay, okay, beta. Thank you. Thank you so much. Replace cliches. What do you mean by that now? Don't repeat. Don't repeat the same phrase. Don't repeat the same words, which makes your writing style a little monotonous. It makes the writing style a little boring. So you should use new words whenever you are writing your any kind of a piece, any kind of a writing. Now the grammar. Person is that you need to know the rules. You should be very, very careful about any kind of errors you make. You should be very, very clear with your concept. 
if somebody if the teacher is teaching you active and passive you should know the rules and you should be very very clear with the concept what to do when okay read a lot of books magazine in order to enlarge your vocabulary that is going to help you in writing styles okay learn how to expand your sentences don't make short short sentences you can by the way of conjunctions you can elaborate your sentences you can make more complex practice you need to a lot of practice to come to that i have a small small mantra for you over here look at the structure on the on the uh, on your screen you will see the structure we are talking about five kinds of structure okay subject verb subject verb object subject verb adjective subject verb adverb subject verb noun it is very easy if you see if you look at it i have given you examples also for example the first one subject verb john studies my friend is playing look at the subject verb object i like ice cream maya reads novels look at the third category now subject verb adjective raj is happy renu is pretty now subject verb adverb speak she speaks fluently these flowers are everywhere subject verb noun my father is a shopkeeper you are a student so these are very common structures and you need to work upon these structures and i'm pretty sure that you will come up with beautiful sentences which is going to help you gaining marks in your writing skills but last not the least whenever you write your writing skills always check so that you have not made any grammatical error or you have not made any spelling error so you need to practice that last and not the least which is your literature section now in the literature section you your characters play a very important role number one so you need to read your text read your chapter thoroughly nicely read your chapter okay then you need to know the importance of your characters which is a good character which is a bad character which character is improving what is the role of the character what kind of a role is the character playing so you should be aware acquainted with your characters practice writing under timed conditions now what do you mean by this you should give yourself a time 15 minutes and then you complete that 15 within 15 minutes give yourself a target that will finish these two questions in those 15 minutes or the three questions in the 15 minutes okay the last one which is very very interesting is you need to set up paper for yourself in this you can have your friends you can have work with your friends your friend creating a paper for you you creating a paper for them it can be simple questions and then you check each other's paper how many mistakes you have made how many marks you are getting this is actually going to help you with timed conditions timed conditions that means when you set the paper when you write the paper and when you mark the paper so when you set the paper setting the paper for a friend not yourself when you write a paper so you time it that within this particular 30 minutes or 45 minutes you need to finish with the paper so then you are going to get a practice not only of setting a paper means understanding a question how can you set a paper when you understand question well only then you can set questions for the others writing part with timed situations so you will be able to finish your questions in proper time and marking that means you will be able to help them because even you need to know the answers so you will help them marking and you will make your partner also realize ki what kind of errors they have come up with your partner will come to make you realize that what kind of error you have done in your paper this can not only be done with the, your friends but you can do it with a brother sister you can take the help of your parents as well okay let's go for a recapitulation and then we can have one last activity okay now recapitulation for the entire thing practice by writing out each answer so you need to practice them at least two times when you learn your answers when you read your textbook see that you learn your answers and you practice them writing two or two times you don't want to learn you write them two times you will be able to learn it automatically okay now when you read the chapters read them loudly in front of the mirror 
stand in front of the mirror take your textbook and read them loudly this is the way you are going to improve your pronunciation you are going to improve your confidence and also you will understand your content okay try to write about the issues that are currently going on which are hot in news anything which is happening right now take that particular incident and start writing about it that is actually going to improve your vocabulary also and your writing style as well when you read your poem and your chapter see that you read it twice thrice don't just read it once read it twice thrice so that you get a knack of it so you understand the poem you understand your chapter well solve solve lots of exercise solve lots of sample papers of last year solve your revision papers that is going to help you a lot okay keep track of the time now in the 80 marks paper you all get 3 hours but in the weekly test you get 20 you get 40 40 minutes or 45 minutes okay that is 20 marks paper so uh, what is being observed that in the 20 marks paper what happens is you fall short of time so if you practice and learn and practice writing and time it out then this is going to be solved so you can always finish your paper within time if you practice a little more try to revise as many times as possible this is very very important that you revise and you re-revise so once you revise and once you re-revise what happens is then you actually get the content of what you are going to write in your paper now let us have one activity it's a very very interesting activity let me share the screen with you okay So what are we going to do here? We are, we are going to write. We are going to, we are going to type the words which you are going to say. Okay. And what is the condition? There is a condition, my dear children. You are not. You are not going to count. I am going to use the dice. Let me help you with that also. I will help you with the dice. And what will happen? You will exactly take that number of num number of words. And you are going to share those number of words with us. Okay, here we go. Let me share the screen with you now, and let me take the names. I will take the names, and that person will be there. Okay, here we go. Let me tell you what we are going to do now. We are going to use a dice. Now here comes the number five. So I will take a name for example, Medhanj. So Medhanj needs to tell me five words to begin a story. Okay. and i'm going to type that story for you but what are we going to do we are not going to count the prepositions the conjunctions and articles okay so when you when you say five you need to have five words you are also going to tell me where to use capital letter where to use a comma you will tell me all those kind of things you will tell me where to use the full stop also all right here we go so let's have let's have shlesha Shlesha, we can have one more because this is one word. Shlesha, you got number four. Okay, so Shlesha, you will start with number four now. Shlesha, are you there? Ma'am, can I? Let's have Shlesha. Let's have Shlesha. Yes. Shlesha, okay, Shlesha is not there. Can we have Yashasvi? Four words. We are not going to count the prepositions, the articles. Let me help you out. For example, here, let me start. Once, so I'm going to use a capital O. Once upon a time. So see, one, two, three, and one more. Once upon a time, there. But there has to be after time. There has to be a comma. So I'm putting a comma as well. Once upon a time, I'm not going to count a because a is the article. So we are not going to count uh, the in and of articles, prepositions, conjunctions. But we are going to go with the words. So once upon a time, comma there. Now let's have the dice and then let's have it. Okay. 
let me share here we go and let's have number 3 medansh number 3 yes ma'am tell me there was a man uh, chopping wood in the forest okay there was a man chopping 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 wood good. chopping wood all right so let's have somebody else now let's have we already had four let's have five dash let's have you with us dash five five words you have to give me yes ma'am once upon a time there was a man chopping wood uh, in a in a forest full stop okay uh he lived a very simple life he lived a very simple life excellent excuse me ma'am i have a doubt yes beta ma'am uh, here can we write that he led a very simple life excellent beta instead of lived strong verb we just talked about a strong verb so instead of lived we can we can write over here as he led a very simple life very good that's the observation excellent bachcha now let's have somebody else's turn okay here we go with the dice let's have let's have somebody else now three so who's going to go to give you three words you can raise your hands but you need to think and the story needs to progress okay three words we can have nirupama nirupama yes bachcha yes ma'am so after a full stop he led a very simple life like that of a monk but the like that stop. of a hermit uh, ma'am in that uh, previous sentence only he lived a very simple life like that of a monk uh, a hermit so we don't have a full stop right uh not right now ma'am okay so let's see lived a very simple life like that of a hermit simple life like that of a hermit so can we change a little can we have some different kind of a construction here uh yes ma'am like a hermit in yes, terms of writing that we can have like a hermit like a hermit hermit okay like a hermit like a hermit he lived a very simple life like a hermit full stop okay in anybody the, else now next uh, in the grave depths of the uh, depths of the forest one more what ma'am 
give me one word more you have to give me four so you give me yes, three give me one more word yes ma'am in the depths of the green wild forests he in would the in the depths of the green wild forest okay in a, so let's go in a tropical subcontinent fine that's fine you actually gave me more than that okay here we go let's have somebody else now thank you nirupama very good excellent beta so have five now let's have five who's going uh, to five ma'am it's actually words? my mother's name ma'am puranjay okay <laughs> you've joined with your mom's name okay here beta five now who's going to give me five words more Anyone who's not participated, come on. Who is it? Ma'am, may I? Who is this? May I? Ma'am, may I? Ma'am, Kervi. Ma'am, Kervi. Kervi. Okay, Kervi. Five words. Okay, five words. Let's have these five words. Yes, ma'am. So let's have your white board here. Okay. Yes, child. Um. Then. He had a curious little puppy. He had a curious little puppy. Puppy. Okay, that's enough. Full stop. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let's have six words. Let's have six words from. Let's hear it from. Uh, six words from. Let's have. Raise your hands, bacha. So it will be very easy for me to, you know, come to a conclusion whom to give to. Raise your hands if you are interested. Building a story, you are creating such a beautiful new story. We can have Archit. Archit, we can have you, dear. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, he had a curious little puppy. Ma'am, instead of full stop, we can write he used to play with him. Okay. But we can have Who a new to... line, right? Yes, okay, ma'am. We used to play with. We need a comma. Do we need a comma there, Archit? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Continue, Bita. Who used to play with him? Ma'am, used to play with him. No, used one, to play with him. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we started the chapter. We started with the story with the chopping of the wood in the forest. Okay, was a man chopping wood in a forest. Then we came down to he lived like a hermit. Uh, we are talking about the forest. Then now we are talking about the puppy. The the continuity has to be the same. See, look at the construction the way you started your story, and look how it needs to. That is called the flow. The flow of the story has to go properly. It has to lead one instant to the other. Okay, who is going to continue? Let's have the name, and let me give you words now. Let me give you words. Can, Can I have Kashvi? Can we have Kashvi? Yes, ma'am. Kashvi, can we have at least six words? Can we have Kashvi? Six words from you, Vita. Yes. One day, the puppy ran uh, in the city. One day, the puppy. Ran in the city. Uh, into the city. One. Into. Mom, or we can, uh, or we can add towards the city. And then to the city. To the city. city. Oh, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Towards the city. To the city. Excuse me, ma'am. So one day, what happened? One day, the puppy ran to the city. Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, dear. Ma'am, leave it. Um, since we started the story with once upon a forest. time, there was a man chopping wood in the forest. Can we write on that particular day the puppy ran into the city? We can do that, right? We can do that. Now, how will you change the sentence then? Ma'am, I have a doubt here. 
yes beta what I doubt you have right ma'am i never written that once upon a time there was a man chopping wood in the forest then in the it was a continuation then we came in then we came to his house and ma'am i think the flow is not yes. matching there has one. to be a continuous action that is the flow of the story okay so once you are constructing ma a story uh, always pay attention to the flow do we need to add a line in order to continue yes dear ma'am uh, ma i ma'am i need to uh, go to my uh, native place so can i leave no issues beta sure sure yes ma'am bye ma'am excuse me ma'am instead of to the city can we write towards excuse the city excuse me ma'am Candy, I, I was not able to hear you. Yes, dear. Ma'am, I was asking that instead of writing to the city, can we write towards the city? Yes, beta. Ah, uh, ma'am. We can write to the city, and towards the city also we can write. Ma'am, excuse me. I want to modify something here. Yes, beta. Carry on. Ma'am, we can, ma'am, we can say that uh, one day the man was ill, so the puppy went hmm. to uh, the city to the to take the medicine. Ma'am, uh, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, to make the flow of the story, ma'am, we can add that uh, uh, the. The the woodcutter was uh, was very hardworking and earned uh, and earned money by chopping wood for his family. Ma'am, ma'am, excellent, can excellent response, very good response. So, in order to continue, in order to keep the flow of the story, we need to add a line there talking about what? Talking about see when you come down to your story, what happened now? What happened? now there's an abrupt so when you write this is the same mistake you do when you do the papers what happens at that time what happened at, the, at that time also you don't realize that you are writing some kind of a points which are not relevant there and now it is like abrupt okay so now how the yes. flow flow of the story should be the flow of the story should be continuous the flow of the story should be continuous yes we can write like once our time there was a man chopping wood in forest and he found the little puppy Excellent, Akilesh. Very good. Very good, beta. Any more? Any else? Give me a suggestion. Ma'am, we can also write that uh, the man who chopped the woods uh, in the forest was a really hardworking man, but earned a very little penny. Very good. Very nice. Ma'am. And then after that, after that, you can talk about the puppy. But in continuation, you have to go. You have to add two, three lines in order to get a flow. Okay. Now, what do you understand with the structure? Who will tell me structure? Ma'am, to make the flow, we can. Yes, somebody was saying something. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, you can uh, instead of writing uh, one day the dog ran into the city, you can write why the uh, actually the forest is located in a very rural area. You can write why the wood cutter was cutting wood. The cheeky dog had ran off deeper into the forest. Excellent, Sparsh. Very good. Ma'am, very we nice. We can also give uh, more adjectives to the puppy. Yeah, we can give adjectives to the puppy. Very good, Falak. For example, Falak, think of something. Uh, Ma'am, he for that he was very yeah. uh, naughty and active. He was naughty and active. Very good. In order to make your story interesting, we are adding adjectives also. Very good. Ma'am, we can also describe the look of the puppy. Ma'am, yes, first Trisha, we can describe the. Um, ma'am, ma we can describe the woodcutter by saying he was a hard, hardworking person and he only for his family. Very good. He was a hardworking person. Ma'am, we can also write that. But we already, we already established that he was a hardworking person. Ma'am, 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 we can also describe the look of the puppy. 
very good we can do that as well it was cute we also uh, can talk about his species it was a pomeranian or it was an alsatian we can also talk true. about the species of the puppy uh, okay we can, we can also can write that the uh, board cutter uh, uh, an honest living yes honest living very good okay now the last Ma point which i want to discuss is the last point pay attention to that is the kind of recapitulation okay we do the recapitulation and how do we do the recapitulation all right so when we do the re recapitulation of a poem or a story what happens is you know we need to revisit the entire chapter so what we can do is instead of revisiting the entire chapter we can make a mind map all right how do we make a mind map it's very simple and with the with the help of the mind map what happens is you know you remember everything you don't have to even worry about it all right here we go i'll teach you something i'll teach you some tips i'll show you something and we can go ahead with that are you ready let's take one chapter let's take a chapter me, anyone can take any chapter uh, is my screen visible yes ma'am yes, ma okay yes, ma for example yes, let's take a chapter of um, the taro you remember the taro chapter yes ma'am and the taro's reward yes ma'am yes Yes, so in the, when you make a mind map when you make a mind map always remember to write the name of the chapter taro's reward right the name of the chapter and then you can draw different different kinds of tentacles you can draw different different kinds of lines which you can actually talk about what you can talk about uh, characters the first can be the characters Ma'am, can I say one second, beta? So you can have characters. In the tarot, what kind of characters do we have? Come on, tell me quickly. Ma'am, uh, ma'am, tarot, ma his parents. Ma'am, tarot, his parents. Ma'am, the village. Ma'am, the king of the Japan. कैरेक्टर्स अंडर वन हेडिंग सो द एंटायर all the chapters characters are under one heading okay now here we can have moral what was the moral of the story who will tell me the moral of the story ma'am may i ma'am the moral of the story was that you should ma'am you should always be be ma'am the moral of the story was ma'am do not to be uh, take care of your parents Uh, yes very good don't be jealous of others ma'am do good have Ma good very good ma'am do not be jealous do good have good don't be jealous ma'am don't be jealous of kind me. to be caring not to be getting don't jealous of others ma'am do it good do you have to respect and obey your parents okay so here the next can be difficult words difficult words in the chapter whatever the difficult words we have come across that can be listed as 1 2 3 4 and also on so what is going to happen you have your characters you have the moral of the story you have the name of the chapter you have your difficult words in one page so you just have at one glance you just have the entire chapter or the entire poem in one page and this mind map also helps you in other subjects it is going to help you in science it's also going to help you in sst so you can make these kind of map mind maps and you can revise your chapters ma is it easy a doubt can so i will you be able to do that is it easy yes ma'am yes ma'am mama ma okay. i have a doubt yes dear yes akshat what doubt you have with you ma'am Ma'am, I don't. Ma'am, I have a doubt. Yes, who has a doubt? Yes, dear. Please ask. Ma'am, I. Ma'am, I have a doubt. Yes, dear. Ma'am, ma'am, my doubt is: can we, uh, if there is a mind map, can we tell that it, a mind map, a mind map is the keywords of the story? 
yes the difficult words the key words whatever the list you want to make that should be in just one page and at a glance you will come to know what is all what is there in the chapter so it will be easier for you to actually recapitulate revise the chapter when you revise the chapter it will be very easy for you so making a mind map should be your habit of making a mind map in every subject not only english but every subject is going to help you out anyone having any other doubt ma'am we already make mind maps in ss okay uh, that's really good even in very science good. even in science even in we science. make them so you can do the same thing with english you can have the name of the cha chapter in the center you can have name of the poem in the center with the poet and then you can have different different blocks saying about the difficult word the poetic devices of the poem and um, uh, something about the uh, what is the theme of the poem all that can conditions can be written in the mind map so you can have the mind map of a chapter also of a poem and of grammar concepts also okay i hope you have enjoyed your session everyone Yes. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma and I hope yes, these all tips, these all tips are going to help you to score good marks in English. Will that be there? Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, ma'am.